top predator of the coral highlands, Legiana is an elegant and graceful hunter that's one of the best flyers in the wyvern family, comparable to being a king of the skies in its own right. Known as the Windrifter wyvern, its seemingly delicate form belies considerable strength and ferocity, and a closer look at said form unearths several questions about Legiana that may also tell us more about the history of the New World. So where to begin with all of that? Much as we did with Seregios, this will start with the feet. And an interesting tidbit about Legiana is that it's said to eat primarily Rufinos, the parrotfish-like wing drakes of the coral highlands. But one look at Legiana's feet clearly shows that it's very over-equipped for this job. Its huge, hypertrophied talons and slender tarsal bones are most reminiscent of occipitrids, specifically occipiters like goshawks and sparrowhawks. Occipiters can kill in a variety of ways, but this foot morphology allows them to typically take large prey, both in absolute terms and relative to their body mass when compared to other birds of prey. Occipiters typically kill by anchoring themselves to their prey and then eating it alive, with blood loss or organ failure being what kills the prey usually. This is why they have such impressive foot morphology, subjugating something big and that's hoping to stay alive whilst you start eating it, requires strong specialist equipment. Legiana's feet are also specified to be excellent at grasping, and holding too, so it does seem to fit that Legiana can hold onto large, struggling prey. Smaller prey can just be constricted in the foot itself though, and it may be this is how Legiana often kills Rufinos if it bothers to kill them prior to eating in the first place. As we can see, one can likely fit quite comfortably in the huge feet of Legiana. Interestingly too, Legiana also seem to have tomial teeth-like structures in the maxilla like a falcon. These are typically used to snap the neck or crush the skull of disoriented prey once it's been knocked down out of the sky. Occipiters lack the bite force to do this often, and so prefer disembowelment, but it could be that Legiana uses this on smaller or difficult prey. Captured small animals it doesn't have a good hold on, or especially feisty species that may require a quick kill, could be the ones that Legiana uses the tomial teeth on. This also doesn't necessarily exclude the evolution of the huge occipital-like feet. As said, the tomial teeth are probably limited by prey size. Animals over a certain size can't be taken out this way due to being too tough, or Legiana's gape being too small, and so the talons are used to subjugate it whilst it's being eaten alive, in occipital fashion. As well as this, certain prey animals may have a resistance to it. Palumu has a layer of thick elastic skin tissue around its neck, and as well as being able to be filled with air to try and intimidate foes, this likely provides good protection for the skin of the neck as many carnivorans have. Like predators with honey badgers, it may be a challenge for Legiana to properly grasp the neck through all the loose skin, although this unfortunately won't save it from the initial tactic of disembowelment. In comparison to other flying wyverns, Legiana may also hunt primarily on the wing, and be specialised in other volant animals. Falcons and occipitors have the narrow toes adapted to being an avivore, and in comparison to other flying wyverns like Rathalos, we can see that they have considerably broader toes. These are likely to deliver fatal kicks to heavy-bodied terrestrial targets with the goal of killing them outright, rather than grappling with them too much. And this fits with Rathalos's diet of Aptonoth, Slagtoth, and other large herbivores primarily. So overall, Legiana is vastly over-equipped to hunt just tiny little Rufinos. But if this is the case, why are they its main diet? It may be that the main course is extinct or considerably less abundant. Jaguars are regarded as the top predators of South and Latin America, being large, robust pantherine felids that are third only to the lion and tiger in size. But a lot of their prey is small, being animals like capybara or peccary that are considerably smaller than their own body mass, which is very out of line for both large felids and large predators in general, and also clashes with optimal foraging theory. But the reason for this is that there really isn't much else on offer, or at least there isn't nowadays. Jaguars evolved in ecosystems with far more herbivores and far larger ones too, and so were initially adapted to hunting these prior to their extinction at the end of the Pleistocene. Large cats in other regions weren't as affected by this, as in comparison Africa isn't so far off what it looked like in the Pleistocene, 
and large regions of Asia still retained good numbers of its large and giant herbivores. In the case of the cougar in North America, the mega herbivore prey base may be extinct, but the cougar likely never really ate much of those anyway, considering it already avoids bison, the largest remaining mammalian herbivore. It's suggested that the jaguar survived due to the fact that back in the day it was far from the top predator, with there being a multitude of carnivore species far larger than it too, and its adaptations to living with them included taking smaller prey. But Pleistocene jaguars were also larger than modern ones, and larger carnivores take a broader range of prey full stop, so it may well be that the jaguar have just survived overall by being less specialised than animals like the bulky macaridont felids, among others. Being more of a generalist, with a lot of tricks up your sleeve to find food, is just generally a good strategy evolutionarily. So when we apply all of this to Legiana, it does suggest that in the new world things haven't always looked the way they do now. The whole continent, but especially the coral highlands, may well have been a very different place, with more and larger winged species that Legiana was specialised in taking down in goshawk-like fashion. The breadth of Legiana's diet and its morphology also allowing for the taking of small prey, allowed it to survive on raffinos and other animals when the larger prey it initially evolved to kill went extinct, as well as other large predators and competitors too. It may also be that several thousand years ago, Legiano considerably larger, much like Pleistocene jaguars. It's hard to say what exactly the original coral highlands may have been like in this past era, because the notion of bizarre land coral is already alien enough without that much information on how it operates. There is evidence of coral bleaching though, and some species seem to be doing poorly. The World Book mentions that the coral closer to the veil gets more nutrients and is healthier, but some corals in the lowest points are also described as struggling and unhealthy. Coral doesn't live forever, of course, but some of this suggests that for some coral species, the highlands have become something of a suboptimal habitat, roughly assuming it was something like an ice age that was the last geological era. At the end of it and the period of climate change, there may well have been significant die-offs in coral numbers and diversity, leading to a decline of animals that specialised in them, that Legiana itself likely ate only the hardier species able to cope with the new abiotic conditions survived. And despite their beauty and levels of endemism, the coral highlands may be comparatively impoverished habitat compared to its former glory. This is not to say that the coral highlands are dead or dying. It's still its own unique and functioning ecosystem that may well replenish itself with adaptation, just that it may be a shadow of its former self right now in terms of biodiversity and ecosystem functioning. And indeed, Legiana may well not be the only large predator who specialised for different prey in a different time. But in terms of its diet now, whilst there may be safety in numbers for Rafinos, Legiana can still successfully hunt them even in groups, and recent research on Swainson's hawks hunting bats shows how predators get around dense swarms of prey. Essentially, don't make an effort to single one out and actually pursue it, Simply aim for the most dense part of the swarm and dive, grabbing the nearest one that you'll inevitably be on a collision course with. Despite behavioural theory suggesting groups and larger groups reduce predator success through greater vigilance, if anything, large group sizes work against them and almost ensure the predator will collide with a target, giving them equal success against groups and single individuals. This explains why Legiana may even preferentially select for flocks of Rafinos when hunting. A Rufino's best bet is likely to find refugia where Legiana can't or won't follow. As with aerobatics or straight line speed, it's near impossible to beat. Small size and mobbing may be the best chances for the flock, but they may also choose to change their movement patterns as well. Suitably spaced flocks give more room to manoeuvre, and a less dense aiming spot for the predator. So Rufinos may behaviourally change their collective behaviour to make it harder for Legiana to pick a dense dive spot to attack. Much like the occipitas it resembles, and perhaps the goshawk most of all, variety in prey and adaptability in taking it may be Legiana's key to success, both overall and surviving periods of climate upheaval, and anything with wings that lives around it may be considered potentially on the menu. As discussed, Palumu may be a frequent prey item, although their turf war doesn't appear to be failed predation, so much as Legiana just slapping around Palumu for fun. Coral Pukey Pukey may also be an occasional victim, 
relying on its excellent senses and smaller size to climb into hard-to-reach places for escape. Legiana does seem to prefer hunting on the wing, above all else staying above its opponents, and so may not prefer to take ground-based prey. However, when needs must, it may adjust its strategy to include Sitsuyaku in its diet too. And in the hoarfrost, with a lack of winged prey, it seems to prefer primarily Anteka and Popo calves especially for the fatty tissues that are so vital to providing energy. In such circumstances, it seems to adapt its strategy accordingly, using an attack more like Rathalos's low gliding attacks before ploughing into its target and inflicting grievous wounds with the talons. We see a glimpse of this when Legiana and Odogron fight. Legiana initially swoops down on the Odogron and almost starts to knead it with its talons. This is a strategy goshawks are sometimes seem to use to puncture prey organs in hunting too. Even if Legiana is unsuccessful, this may actually suggest that unlike Palumu, this is actually attempted predation on Odogron over competition. Indeed, Legiana may see much of the animals around it as merely food or threats, and despite perhaps its more dainty appearance, it's far from shy about combat. Legiana is described as highly territorial and pretty willing to confront foes, and the initial dive bombing it gave to the Sapphire Star and their handler on entry to the Coral Highlands, maybe due to the fact that the constant captures, hunts, and harassments from the guild, has forced Legiana as a species to view them as a threat to be attacked. The Third Fleet scholars piloting a giant delicate airship straight into their home was also a decidedly poor choice, that was punished with a single hostile Legiana halting research expeditions into the Coral Highlands for decades. Legiana is also fearless in confronting larger and more powerful foes like Devil Joe and Rajang, even managing to land a hit before being overpowered and subjugated. With foes such as Elder Dragons, as migratory wyverns, they may have had some evolutionary impacts on Legiana behaviour. It's suggested that Legiana in the Coral Highlands migrate to the Hoarfrost due to detecting movement and actions from Shara Ishvalda, that may have had notable geological impacts on flows of magma and bioenergy in the New World. It may seem a bit much to migrate when not much has really happened, but it may be the disturbance often precedes other factors. It's mentioned the Hoarfrost was once a warmer place before the subterranean actions of Shara disturbed magma flows, and the volcano is now extinct, and so it may have impacts of warmth and nutrient cycling in the Vale too, which will in turn significantly affect the Coral Highlands. Shara's actions may prevent magma flows, cause canyon collapses, or other actions to prevent nutrient cycling into the Vale, and thus cause coral die-offs and in turn reductions of Legiana's food stocks. Large numbers of Legiana may in turn choose to migrate when they sense any significant action from Shara. But not all, of course, as some Legiana obviously stayed in the Coral Highlands in the events of Iceborne. So the migration may well be partially eruptive. This effectively means a migration triggered by a lack of food or other resources, rather than innate hormonal urges. And it's also seen in some birds of prey. Long-eared owls, among others, are well known for their large migrations, that are often triggered by food. Exceptionally harsh winters drive the owls south in search of more favourable conditions, and this can also be seen after a good rodent year too, when there will be more owls. Whilst there are often some individuals that migrate no matter what, mass migrations of huge numbers are often a sporadic occurrence, and due to being based on certain factors, it can happen several years in a row, or just once in a long period. So as well as Shara, Legiana migrations may well be in a response to coral die-offs and climate change too, and the unique nature of the coral highlands and its variable productivity may well be what prompted the migratory behaviour in the first place. We see mid-migration that Vulcana harasses members of the flock, and it may also be possible too that the mass migrations are for safety. Elder dragons themselves are partially migratory too, as per the Elder Crossing, and some may also go back and forth between the hoarfrost and mainlands of the old and new worlds, and so may not be adverse to trying to take other animals on the wing. Now Gigante itself effectively seems to specialise in taking exhausted migrants at the end of their journey, and this may apply to Legiana too if it can get the chance. In long-eared owls, which are themselves predators, it's been suggested communal winter migrations and roosts are anti-predator mechanisms, this species often suffering heavily from goshawk and eagle owl predation. Legiana may not be quite so defenceless, and any number of Legiana may well be able to harass an elder dragon into submission, 
Powerful as they are in comparison to Legiana, most elders are aerial slouches, and would be thoroughly embarrassed in a dogfight. Among volant animals, aerobatic ability can have some sway in combat, and with their signature dive bomb, peregrine falcons have been recorded to kill much larger raptors in defence of their nests, including the mighty golden eagle, even if such raptors may predate or dominate them otherwise. It's questionable if Legiana could pull off the same with an elder dragon, but any elder finding itself in the middle of an agitated flock may well come to sorely regret its decision. Outside of the migration and roosting, Legiana may still show some cooperative behaviours, with any combination of normal or shrieking Legiana cooperating on hunts. Cooperation in hunting isn't unheard of in birds of prey, and can often occur in mated pairs, so part of the communal roosting in migratory periods may well be that Legiana engage in courtship in this time, and possibly breeding too. Some migratory breeding birds show excellent memory of their partners, and preferentially pair with them annually even when they spend much of the rest of the year great distances from each other, whereas others can use such events for a seasonal role in the hay. It's anyone's guess as to which strategy Legiana may go for. Something interesting about Legiana is its great weakness to poison, so much so that the guild themselves have noted this, but it's probably more accurate to say things are more resistant to poison than others, rather than things being specifically weaker at the starting line. Few species start with a built-in resistance to toxins, so rather than a specific weakness, it's more accurate to say that Legiana is less resistant to poison than others, and this may also tell us bits and pieces about its history in the New World. Chiefly that its distribution in the New World is likely tied to the Coral Highlands for the bulk of its time there. Considering the breadth of its possible diet, Legiana would likely have some immunity to assorted toxins if it ventured or arose from areas with fauna like Pukey Pukey present, or if it ever really competed with Rathalos and Rathian. So it seems unlikely that Legiana's ancestors ever really ventured into other regions, and indeed the wild spire and ancient forests may well have been unpalatable habitats for it. The pre-Rathalos forest may have been too dense for aerial predators to really succeed, and the wild spire may have had insufficient prey to support it. It's mentioned in the Iceborne book that they're unsure if Legiana started in the Highlands or the Reach, and it's hard to come up with a conclusive answer. The Highlands does seem like the more tempting option, solely because Legiana doesn't seem to be much of a polar specialist with a lack of insulation and huge amounts of vascularised surface area. The lack of thermal updrafts may make flight more expensive here, although this may be mitigated by nautical winds that partially limit Legiana to coastal areas. The hoarfrost likely isn't snowy and cold all year round, so it's not unfeasible for Legiana to have eggs here, even if the coral highlands overall seems like the more likely bet. Again, the hoarfrost itself used to be a much more geologically active area, and it seems that both of Legiana's chosen habitats are not what they used to be, and have undergone significant changes in the past few thousand years. Legiana as a species has endured, but this may well muddy the waters of trying to uncover its origins. Legiana are perhaps the best flyers of any volant wyvern, and are only really beaten among other flying animals by Valstrax. Legiana harnesses the updrafts from the Vale and the Lower Highlands by having an elaborate series of fins and webbing over its body to stay airborne, with minimal effort. Whilst this allows Legiana to glide around the heights of its territory and survey all, the actual physical processes of flight may be different in Legiana to other wyverns too. As well as the webbing, Legiana also has slotted wings, somewhat like those of large birds like pelicans, vultures, and eagles. These wing slots come with a number of benefits. For one, this greatly reduces drag in the animal flying, thus meaning it faces less resistance to move itself through the air. They also create extra thrust by decomposing the upwash of the wing, as this allows the slots, the primary flight feathers in birds and the individual webs in Legiana, to act as individual aerodynamic surfaces that break up the vortexes, instead of having one big one for the wing. So Legiana's unique morphology doesn't just allow for cheap gliding on updrafts, it also allows for more efficient flight with less resistance and greater thrust, overall making Legiana the most agile wyvern in the sky. Legiana's production of frost seems odd. Well, not that there's any sane or normal way you can just create cold, in that it's described as secreting a liquid that causes water to freeze, 
that seems to suggest that the ice Legiana forms to attack the player with is atmospheric water vapour in the air, just solidified from the secretion. Shrieking Legiana is a variant that has significantly more glands and can produce considerably more of the fluid. The association of shrieking with incredibly cold environments may suggest that this fluid is helped along by relatively cold external temperatures. And shrieking may make more fluid as it's better utilised in the sub-zero hoarfrost reach. It may have a point of diminishing effectiveness in the warmer areas of the coral highlands. Other than just spotting and counting the glands, if a shrieking ever did fly to the mainland and go to the coral highlands, it may actually be quite difficult to tell them apart. With Legiana as the knife-footed occipiter of the skies, it does feel like Monster Hunter now has most of the major bird of prey groups represented across its true flying wyverns. Only really missing are the falcons, but on one hand there's Valstrax, and on the other the aspects that make falcons unique would translate poorly to an actually fun fight. Astalos is also somewhere in there. This is not to say that there can't be more of them, and additions like water combat could see an osprey-like flying wyvern, and some specialist roles could potentially be fulfilled if day or night or seasons were ever factored into properly impact gameplay. Something like a bat-hawk night wyvern could be an idea for the future, but overall the skies of Monster Hunter have a diverse and interesting set of winged carnivores across new and old world alike. So for my thoughts on Legiana, one of my favourites. Maybe top 15, but at any rate it's probably vying with Anjanath for third place for my favourite world newcomer. Legiana's almost manta ray-like designs fit perfectly with the theme of the Coral Highlands being the sea on land. How about giving us the sea in the sea in 6th gen Capcom? As does its ability to glide on the updrafts of the Highlands. World's monsters were often very tailor-made for their environments and Legiana is no different. Similarly, its lithe and perhaps even feminine frame and voice also made it a nice contrast to the typically bulky and masculine wyverns. The stark contrast between Legiana and Odogron is also nice, the angelic wyvern descending from the peaks of the heavens to fight the gore-smeared hellhound that dredged itself free of the diseased charnel pits to plague the heavenly highlands. Even if we had to wait until Iceborne to get it, it's still fitting that after beating up the rest of the Highlands, Odogron meets its counter in Legiana. It's a relationship and a very fitting rivalry I hope to see more of in future visits to the New World, whenever they happen. Its base fight is also reasonably good, with a lot of bespoke animations, although I'm aware a lot don't like Shrieking, who does spend a lot more time in the sky than it ever needs to. And a lot of its good unique moves do just show it off as perhaps the best Wyvern flyer only really rivalled by Seregios. Overall, I just personally found a lot to like in Legiana. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all the patrons for donating. A huge one especially to Erengar Steiny, Venomenon, Goggles, ESM, and K Sandom for their generosity. The truly wonderful images of Legiana behaviour for this video were created by Carmen Ryder Moten, who also provided the reference images both here and for I Am The Kaiju King to create his excellent skulls. This is just a short selection of some of their work, and they've made many more and are always coming up with great new ideas, some set to appear in future videos. So be sure to check out and follow their Tumblr and Twitter, links provided in the description, for updates and new pieces. Be sure to follow I Am The Kaiju King as well, and a big thank you to him for the Legiana scroll. And thanks too to Goji for getting the translated information on Shrieking Legiana from the Iceborne art book. To address some points from the Mitsu video, well to start, what else can one say really about Fire Mizutsune other than my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. One thing a few suggested or asked about was the potential of bubble foam to hunt fish. Whilst Mizutsune probably can't pull off something as elaborate as the full bubble nets Satishans use when hunting, it's not an unreasonable idea. It's hard to say if the slipperier bubble foam may also clog gills, or if it may deoxygenate water, but it's not unreasonable to imagine Mizutsune using it to provision mates or offspring especially. It could also potentially use it to herd fish into the shallows to be caught as well. Retko also suggested Soul Seer's blindness may result in a preference for bomb arowana, and in turn getting the explodey bubble variety from accumulating whatever the fish use for their explosive properties. Some also suggested the foam could be used for transport, and it's not hard at all to imagine Mizutsune belly sliding like an otter downhill. The hooked claws may also help it move in its own bubble foam too, as many suggested. 
But who did Legiana beat in the poll? And you may well be surprised about who Legiana managed to win out against. 